Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey, welcome to my house of love, yada yada yada. You know, I've had this ring for almost an entire year now, and almost nothing's come of it. I mean, I haven't fought any giant monsters, I haven't liberated any South American nations, haven't even had to mention that D. Amanda Hagen. I wonder what the power of Lionheart really is. Never mind, eh? Well, roll titles and we'll start this episode proper. Come to the end of another season, and what better way to bow out in style than with another adventure from the Annals of the Dark Knight. Yes, today we'll be looking at the director disc animated adventure, Batman, Under the Red Hood. Released in 2010, Batman Under the Red Hood is loosely based on the classic stories A Death in the Family and Under the Hood. The Dark Knight faces a mysterious new player in the Gotham underworld. But is he hero or villain? The truth, along with the mysterious Red Hood's true identity, will shock you. And so, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Batman Under the Red Hood. Another night in the original City of Crime, and a mysterious meeting of crime lords is set up. And we soon find out by whom. Around Sit him. down, Freddy. Who the hell are you? Ladies and gentlemen, the titular and imaginatively titled Red Hood. Who is he? What is his plan? How will Batman react to him? Well, it wouldn't be much of an episode if I told you that straight off the bat, now would it? <laughs> no, you'll have to watch to find out. Those are the heads of all your lieutenants. That took me two hours. <laughs> So, yeah, this guy doesn't mess around. <laughs> Let's move on quickly. <laughs> it's just another day at the office for Batman. Go, go! Where's Raymond and Denny? We got them! No, you're anything but good. You see that? That is a good solid one-liner. Something that Hollywood has been sorely lacking of late. It's always good to have a good solid one-liner. I would say just ask Spider-Man, but they're different universes. Until an Amazo robot spoils the party. A highly advanced cybernetic android equipped with the ability to absorb the power of superhumans. I would say show don't tell here, but uh, then you'd have to put another superhuman into the movie just to have them show how Amazos suck out superpowers, so... Yeah. Then Nightwing joins the fray. Need a hand? No. Same old grumpy Batman, never accepting his support network. It'll be his undoing, you mark my words. Eventually, the Amazo is defeated. <laughs> ah, the old plastic explosives in the eye gambit. Classic ploy, that. Used it once myself. It was about 2003. But the crooks that stole it pay the price for turning canary. We're working for the Red Hood. We don't have any choice. He's got a... Batman tails the sniper to the old chemical plant. Birthplace of the Joker. <laughs> no one actually knows who that poor unfortunate was before that fateful night. Who is, of course, their next line of interrogation? Good. Been working out? What do you know about it? 
that he has horrible taste. Poor taste? Poor taste? This from a man who flogs himself in technical and madness? I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> and naturally, as much use as a chocolate teapot. Would-be head crook of Gotham, the Black Mask, orders a hit on the mysterious Red Hood. He's dead. Who has his own problems when a heist of firearms attracts our Chiropteran Crusader. Okay then. Our heroes track the hood to the train station. But a half-buried bit of banter... You haven't lost your touch! You haven't lost your touch, bro! ...leads our hero to a painful memory. Back on the streets, the gang war between red and black gets hot. Ooh, nasty. And when the Red Hood steps into the fray, it's an ambush. I thought you'd put up more of a fight. But the Dark Knight is never far away. Our protagonist's clean house. But Red goes too far. And this was passed for a certificate 12 in the UK. You know, for 12 year olds! And compounds his folly by hitting Black Mask where he lives. Which leaves the Black Mask with only one solution. <coughs> you see, this is what comes of trying to make deals with the Joker. There's your plan, there's his plan, and his plan is usually going to win out. Bruce goes to visit Rachel Ghoul, and we hear the full tale behind the death and resurrection of Jason Todd. So I hired the Joker. Then, he murdered the boy. Yep. He killed Jason Todd. Because Joker. Obviously. Still, you know how old Reiki Boy keeps himself forever young with them Lazarus pits? Yeah. He thought to dip old Toddy in one of them, thought it'd bring him back from the dead. He returned to this world, but returned damaged. So yeah, came back wrong, disappeared into the underground, next scene at the start of the film. Spoiler alert for those who haven't worked it out yet, Jason Todd is the Red Hood. But there's no time to wallow in misery, as the Joker has set up his own brand of mischief. But shock! The Red Hood was in control all along. But the end game was getting Black Mask so desperate that he'd cut a deal. Great plan! Troll the criminal mastermind until he breaks out the nuclear option. <laughs> People say the Joker's crazy. And so the stage is set for our finale. And what a finale it is, as Red takes the Joker to Crime Alley and engages Batman. All in order to argue one single point. Why on God's earth is he still alive? Ooh, short answer of universe answer, plot armor, long in-universe answer, pages and pages and pages of internet arguments. My answer? Don't ask me, you don't want to know. And so, after an explosive climax, our movie ends with an altogether sweeter memory of Jason Todd. This is the best day of my life. So that was Batman, Under the Red Hood. And yes, it's a very dark story, and not without its share of blood and violence. But you know something? I'm going to end this series right, and I'm going to put this one into the house of love. This movie comes once again from the renowned directorship of Bruce Timm and the voice directing of Andrea Romano. The performances are fantastic. Jensen Ackles embittered Jason Todd, entirely frustrated with Batman's excuses. 
Bruce Greenwood's Batman, who puts me in mind of the Brave and the Bold's Diedrich Bader, but in a more serious light, at a positively anorexic 72 minutes. It's stuffed to the gills with plot, character, and true pathos. I can confidently state that even the tale of Batman's greatest failure is still a tale of animated triumph. So then, if I am taken from this earth before I get the chance to make another video, I should like to thank all of my viewers, old and new, for choosing my little house of love over an endless sprawl of hate. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the Heroic Legion of Positive Reviewers for being always there for me. The Happy Viking, Sir Sam Ursa, T-Bell, Rantasmo, Edward, Mad Andy, and of course myself. Yes, I'm the guy. Anyway, if all goes to plan, I'll be back sometime soon with a whole new series of House of Love. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and may your god or your icon go with you. So long, folks! So long, folks! Well, that went rather well, I thought. Hang on. What's going on? What are you doing? Don't do that! Stop doing that! Ah!